Hello, my friends. Good day to you. Hope you're doing well. This is your guy, Shrodes. Welcome to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. Today, we're going to be discussing light side battles, dark side battles, and cantina battles. This is my part of my tutorial series for new players. So one note before I begin, this video is very basic. It's designed for someone brand new to the Galaxy of Heroes game, so if you've already mastered the game, you're probably not going to learn anything new. So light side battles and dark side battles are mirrors of each other. They both use energy uh, to attempt or simulate the missions and they'll provide similar rewards. You'll see each side is broken down into nine different stages. Uh, both of them have a normal and a hard mode uh, that you'll have to complete in order to progress. Uh, so in order to progress through this you have to, to complete each mission with at least uh, one star. Um, now of course our goal is always to get three stars in each mission. Uh, you'll see I've done that but uh, this is my uh, main account where I'm level 85 and further along in the game. Um, but if you're just trying to get through these, one star will allow you to attempt uh, the next mission. Now once you get through all the normal battles on one stage, you'll unlock the hard battles. Now, uh, these light side battles can only be attempted by light side characters. I'm sure that's a shock for everybody here. Dark side battles, likewise, can only be attempted by dark side characters. That means you'll need at least two different teams to get through the game. Uh, you know, these missions are not very hard uh, through most of the game, so I wouldn't spend a lot of time and energy worrying about you know, leveling up characters and, and whatnot. But you do need to level them up somewhat, otherwise you won't be able to get through them. Generally I find the uh, light side battles tend to be a little bit easier uh, early on because your, your light side characters will be stronger, they'll have a little more synergy. Uh, but the dark side battles uh, can be pretty easy once you actually get some of those teams going. And there are some great teams like Empire early in the game uh, that will really be able to work through those. So you'll see, uh, this is the normal energy here. You'll generate one energy every six minutes, which means you'll get four, 240 energy uh, throughout the day uh, just by uh, playing the game. Uh, you can also buy more energy at a rate of 50 crystals for 120 energy and 20 sim tickets. This is a great way to spend uh, your crystals early in the game. Now, the normal battles will reward gear for completing them while the uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, the hard battles are going to reward character shards sometimes ship shards too in addition to uh, gear both battles have a chance of giving uh, sim tickets um, and training droids uh, some of them will even give um, ship currency they're all guaranteed to give uh, credits, uh, XP, and ally points if you use an ally. So I, I recommend you always use an ally, even if it's just a junk ally, just to get those allied points. Uh, they are useful. So hard battles can only be attempted five times per day, uh, unless you spend energy to refresh it. The first refresh will cost 25 crystals, and they'll give you another five attempts. Uh, so the, the, by limiting it to five, they greatly limit how fast you can farm characters from these hard, hard mode battles. Normal battles can be attempted an unlimited number of times because the only thing you're getting there is gear. Uh, the last difference between these two battles, uh, normal battles will cost half the energy of the hard battles at any given stage. So for uh, stage two here, you'll see the hard battles require 12 energy, while the normal battles require 6 energy. Uh, so you're, when you're first starting out, I highly recommend that you only do the hard battles because farming characters is that important. You can always focus on gear later, but starting out you don't have many characters. Getting shards, even at the drop rate that they give them, it is certainly worth it. So if you're looking for specific gear, find a hard node that'll, that'll drop that gear for you. It's worth getting those shards. Uh, so when you're trying to three-star a mission, 
um, you, you you cannot lose any of the, your own characters. Now you can bring in an ally and you can lose that ally and that won't affect your stars uh, for that mission. Um, as long as the characters that you personally own don't die, you'll get three stars on them. So if you have powerful allies, it's certainly worth uh, using one of their characters. Uh, it'll certainly make these missions very easy. You can borrow their best character uh, once per day to attempt uh, these missions. Once you three star, then you can uh, sim it. So really, it's just the first time through that you'll need it. Uh, but that'll that'll let you very quickly progress through these missions. You don't need your characters to be strong. You just need them not to die while your friend's character can take out everything. So try to find a, a guild that will let you uh, become friends with all the members so that you can borrow their characters. <clears throat> if you lose one character, you'll uh, two-star the mission. If you lose more than one, you'll one-star it. But really, the only stars that matter are zero or three. Three means that you can sim it later, while well, zero means that you get no rewards. So whether you get one, two, or three stars, the rewards will otherwise be the same. Now, Cantina Battles... Uh, will unlock at level 8. They're similar to the light and dark side battles uh, because you'll use cantina energy um, to attempt battles. Um, they're, they're set up in the same way. Each battle will have three stages. You gotta get through all three stages in order to complete the battle. Uh, if you lose a character um, then you won't get three stars. You see, you can bring in a friend, uh, so it's it's very nice again to have those friends. Uh, their characters go a lot of times solo the mission, so you just gotta have characters that can get through it. The big difference here is Cantina uh, battles. You can use light and dark side characters and mix and match. You don't need to just use one side. Uh, the Cantina battles only have eight stages instead of nine, and there's only one mode. There's not a, a hard and normal mode. Um, it's just the one mode to get through each stage, uh, so it, it's faster progressing through them. Uh, these battles will focus on giving you character shards, but unlike the hard m mode battles, you can attempt these missions an unlimited number of times, so farming a character from Cantina is much faster than getting it from a hard node. Uh, and there are tons of absolutely necessary characters in Cantina, so working your way through here as fast as possible is certainly advisable. Uh, here is one that I like to get early, she's part of that Phoenix team, uh, Ezra is another one. So unfortunately there's two for Phoenix in here that you need to get. Uh, so, the Katina energy uh, will refresh at 1 per 12 minutes. That's half, half as fast as regular energy. That means you'll generate 120 energy per day. That's really not a lot. Uh, so the best way to spend your crystals early in the game, in my opinion, is to buy refreshes of Katina energy. You'll see it'll cost 100 crystals, but you'll get 120 Katina energy and 10, 10 sim tickets. Now, early on, both of these are very, very valuable. Uh, the Cantina Energy basically double the amount of Cantina Energy you'll get. And I'll say basically because I'll, there's a, a one-time bonus, you can get an extra 45 each day just for logging in and claiming it. I'll go over that later. And the 10 Sim tickets are also very helpful. Uh, early in the game, Sim tickets can be at a crunch. They do save a lot of time. If uh, the, these battles are very easy after the first, you know, several days of playing, so when you buy refreshes, what I like to do is battle through it and just hit auto as soon as I start the battle. Let the computer run through it. It won't take long, and then do it again. That way, I'm not burning sim tickets um, running through these battles. It, it's a great way instead of having to buy sim tickets to uh, get some extra sim tickets for other things that would take longer that you may not have as much success going through again and again. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so after three refreshes, the and the crystal cost will jump up to 200. That starts getting a whole lot there. I would not recommend you do that unless you're just going to be a, a super whale and spend tons of money on the game if you have that much money. 
please toss me a tip or something. I'd really appreciate that. So, uh, I mentioned that there will be several times during the day that you'll get uh, free energy. Uh, you can claim that energy here. You'll see, for me, I've got uh, 2 hours and 32 minutes um, <clears throat> until that free energy is available. So, this is set at 12 hours after your daily reset, whenever that is. Right now, I've got my reset set at 9 uh, p.m. Um, so, this will reset for, or the, the bonus energy will be available for me at 9 a.m. That's 12 hours after my daily reset, and you'll get 45 uh, energy, 45 cantina energy, and 45 mod energy just by logging in and hitting claim. Another 6 hours after that, there'll be another 45 free bonus uh, energy, as well as 45 ship energy. Then another 3 hours after that, you'll get another 45 free energy, and all you have to do is log in and claim it. That means you can get an extra 135 energy and an extra 45 cantina energy every day just by logging in and being active. And I highly recommend that you do that if you want to be successful in this game. Well, that'll wrap it up for this video. If you were wondering what to farm for each of those game modes, I'll have another video on that here soon. And if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and share with other new players. Hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you on the next video.